everyone, back at Farmer Pat here. I am super excited. Today is our harvest day. Can you believe it's already been two months since we planted our seeds? Um, if you didn't watch it, remember back um, a couple months ago, we went through the best veggies to plant for the fall in South Florida. And we planted our Swiss chard and our bok choy and our, and our uh, mustard greens. And today we are gonna start the harvest. Today we're gonna harvest baby bok choy. And, and I took a, got a little jump start and I started harvesting, but come along with me and let me show you how, how we're gonna do this. So you guys remember I planted some in the ground and some in this raised bed. So what I've been harvesting is from the raised bed. Um, what I'm doing is a method called cut and come again, which means you can cut it back and it will grow back. So you can see, for instance, I just cut this one a couple of days ago and you can already see the leaves coming back. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting right above the, the last leaf for it to spring back. All right? Um, what I'm doing is I'm leaving the ones that I've already flowered. And in the last video I posted, I, I mentioned when it's, it's called bolted, when a, when a vegetable goes to flower, it's called bolted. And from these flowers is where you're gonna get seeds for, ne for the next season. So I already have like two or three that have bolted. So I'm gonna leave these so I can have bok choy seeds for the next season. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna kind of tuck this in here so that if the seeds fall, they will fall in the bed, not on the ground. Anyway, let's go right ahead and um, continue our harvest. One thing to, to note, um, the cut and come again method works for most greens. And I'm just about finished with this um, bed. I got this whole bundle of greens just from this tray and it look, looking at it, it looks like it's still full, but all of this came from this one little, one little bed. So within a few weeks, I'll get another full bed and I'll be able to um, harvest some more. One sec. There's one more. Let's go over to our bed that's in the ground and I want to show you a few things. All right, we're over here by the bed. There's a couple things I want to show you. Um, if you notice, these are the mustard greens. We're not going to harvest them today. As I promised you, we'll probably do a video where we're going to, I'm going to, we're going to pickle our mustard greens together. But look at, look at some of these leaves. Do you notice this squiggly mark on this leaf? This is actually called leaf miner. It's, it's really not a good, it's a bad disease. So I'm going to remove these leaves. I know this is digressing, but we don't want this to spread. So anywhere that on your greens, if you ever see this quickly lines, remove it. it it's bad. Um, it's actually a black fly that pitches on, on the greens and the pot is its larva. So we do not want that. All right, so let's, let's move over to our, our bok chow. So I am collecting more. You can see, if you come closer, you can see that I am cutting right above the top green right above the last screen and if these were normal bok choy of course these would be way bigger but these are baby bok choy i love them very much i buy this all the time at the asian market and i am just so thrilled that i have these right in my backyard i can't wait to eat these i know these are going to be 10 times better than what i buy um i'm just going to pick a couple more one thing to note the cut and come method does work for just about every any green. So if you're growing kale, if you're growing cabbage, it's the same thing. You just cut straight across and it will grow back within a few days or maybe a week or two. Um, if you have, if I was harvesting bigger greens, say like these, you can just harvest the leaves you need. You start with the outer leaves and, and work your way in. So if I was harvesting um, mustard greens, I could just break the leaves I need and the same exact thing will work. Um, cut, and, uh, cut and come again where you'll cut it and it will come again or if I wanted I could just cut straight across and they would also grow back so it's really great to, to grow greens in the fall the greens prefer the, the cooler weather and that's why they're doing so well I'd actually try to grow the bok choy in the summer and they sprung up in three days but they never grew because it was just too hot for them so now is the perfect weather it's actually a little bit cooler in South Florida. All right, let's get some herbs, a couple, maybe some chives and stuff to go with this. 
All right, so right beside the bok choy, I have my my um, green onions and my garlic chives. So these green onions were just from store-bought bought onions that I use, stuck the root in the ground and they grow right back. So this is another perfect me um, uh, vegetable that is a cut and come again. You just keep cutting it and in a few days it, it comes right back. Same for the garlic chives. I have fresh garlic and fresh onions that I'm using, but you know I just love to use things for my garden, so I'm gonna use the um, green onions and the garlic chives. Look at that. Looking forward to that. Oh, here's another big one I, I missed. Let me grab that one. All right, you guys will come back in a couple days. All right, now we're ready. We're ready. Come on, let's go cook. All right, so I brought the, the bok choy in. I gave it my good wash. I went through and I made sure that there was nothing bad on there. I made sure that there were no leaf miners and everything is washed and ready. With baby bok choy, they're so small that you really don't need to cut them up. These will wilt down and be perfect at whole. What I did was for a few of them, I cut the stems, but I'm gonna cook the stems with them because really there is nothing to waste here. This is packed with nutrient. This is delicious and you, you'll see. I've already chopped up the garlic chives and the the green onions that we we um that we just picked and let me tell you what we're gonna use so i'm gonna keep it very simple these are so delicious you really don't need a whole lot of you know ingredients or seasoning it's really super delicious but what i'm gonna have here is i i've, I've diced up maybe like three or four small garlic cloves i had some baby portobello mushrooms in the fridge so i took three and sliced those up um, I have half of a small onion, but I'm not going to use all this. This is a lot of onion for the amount of bok choy we're making. And then all I'm going to use today is oyster sauce. I love oyster sauce. I love that umami flavor. So I'm going to use oyster sauce. I'm not going to use any salt or black pepper or anything, but I'm going to add a splash of this really good. This is a really high quality soy sauce that I'm going to use. Um, if, if you're a person that likes spice, um, whenever I'm doing Asian cooking, I don't usually use scotch bonnet, but you can add a little of the chili garlic sauce, or if you have like a fresh Thai, um, if you have like a fresh Thai pepper, you can add a dice of a fresh Thai pepper. You can also use, these are also other options, black bean garlic paste, which is also very delicious, has a great umami flavor, um, or fish sauce. I love to cook with fish sauce, but I'm just not doing it today. I wanna really enjoy the flavor of the bok choy and there are times when you use fish sauce that it can be a little bit overpowering so let's go over to the stove and let, let's let's start cooking so the first thing i'm using my wok this time remember when we made our when i made my sweet um sweet potato leaves i use like a regular frying pan but i love using my wok my cousin actually gave me this wok a few several years ago she had it for many many years when she was growing up raising her kids and she was downsizing and she gave me her wok so now i use this very often i already had the stove heating i, I just added like about a, a tablespoon of grapeseed oil if you have virgin oil olive oil you can but i don't like to use virgin virgin olive oil at all for stir fries i find that uh, a regular oil like canola oil or even vegetable oil which i really don't like but grapeseed oil is really good for quick stir fries so we're going to start with our garlic. So we added our garlic and you know the fire is nice and hot. As I said, I had it preheating for a few minutes. You don't want to ever do a stir fry with, with the stove not hot. You want it to sizzle. You want to hear that sizzle when you, when you throw it in. So I have my, I have my um, fire up at like a medium high. And then I render the garlic for like maybe a minute. You can see it's already beginning to slightly turn brown. And I'm not really good at, I don't usually use measurements, but that's about three or four cloves of garlic. If you love garlic, you can add more. I'm gonna add, remember this was half of a small onion. So I'm gonna use like half of the half. So let's say quarter of an onion. 
and just stir fry that real quick. You can see the garlic getting that beautiful golden brown color. I don't like to bite down on raw onion, so I or raw garlic, so I like to make this. I like to make sure that it's actually becoming translucent because that's when you know that it's, it's cooked. All right. I'm going to add my mushrooms next because I know my baby bok choy, those are going to cook in a minute. So I'm adding the mushrooms next. You notice so far I haven't used any seasoning. The oyster sauce and the soy sauce have a lot of sodium in it. They already have a, it's already salty. So you don't want to make your vegetables too salty. If you, if you're using soy sauce and say you are somebody that has high blood pressure, you can always substitute it for a low sodium soy sauce. Wow. So you can see the onions. This smells incredible. You can see the onions are already rendered. The mushrooms are beginning to break down. Mm. So I'm going to add my bok choy right now. It's that, it's that good guys, literally in it. So I'm adding my chopped stems in and the whole bok choy. I'm not adding my green onions yet. Quickly, quickly, quickly soak out. Oh, I see that there are a couple string beans that I picked that I forgot to take out, but hey, it's all good. It's all good. It's all from the garden. It's all fresh, straight from the garden to the table. All right. So now we're going to, oops, I even have the mustard green in there. Let me take this one out. This has a very strong flavor, so I don't want to change the flavor of my bok choy, so I'm taking this out. The string beans will go well with the bok choy, so I'm not worried about the string beans. It's already breaking down, so I'm going to go ahead and add my sauces now. So remember, so far, I did not add any seasoning. This is just all natural. I'm going to add about a tablespoon of oyster sauce and as I tell you this is so delicious that's about a tablespoon mm, it's gonna be so good and soy sauce is very salty so I'm gonna add let's call it one teaspoon of soy sauce mm, delicious 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 mm. You can see how it breaks down, right? So what I'm gonna do now, mm, th this the smell is incredible. I wish I had a camera that, where you could actually smell it. You can see that the mushrooms are broken down. This will be phenomenal. If you, if you guys have like some chicken, you can slice up thin strips of chicken, stir fry it first, or even a handful of shrimp. Stir fry the shrimp first and then put them aside and then toss them back in once once you get to the stage it's basically cooked if you want a little spice i'm gonna add like half a teaspoon not even half a teaspoon Oops. a very tiny touch of this chi garlic chili paste delicious look at that it automatically sprung its own gravy mm. If, it, if you wanted more gravy, what I did here is I have a little bit of water with maybe maybe half a teaspoon of cornstarch. If you want more gravy, you want to thicken it, you can add like a tablespoon of that. That's just water with a little hint of cornstarch. What the cornstarch does is, is it thickens the gravy. So I'm going to cover this up for one minute and this will be good to go. Mmm, smells incredible, incredible. I just cooked some white rice and I'm gonna taste this with you in one minute. All right, look at that sizzle. Look at these beautiful bok choy and these portobello mushrooms. It's perfect. So 
So I cooked some white rice and I'm gonna taste this now. Mm. Oh my gosh. This smells absolutely incredible. As I said, you could add shrimp to this or you could add chicken or whatever you like or just eat it on a plate of white rice like I'm doing right now. Let me grab my fork. All right. First, let me taste the bok choy by itself. Ooh, it's hot, it's hot, it's hot, sizzling hot. Mmm. Mmm. Delicious. Delicious. Mmm. Mm. Okay. Try one of these portobello mushrooms now. Mmm. Let me tell you, you don't need meat. When you have, and, and I love my meat, I love my curry goat, I love my fish, I love my chicken. But with this, it is so delicious, you don't need meat. And there's something about, about mushrooms. Mmm, 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 absolutely delicious. Let me try my string bean. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mm. Guys, we're in December now. If you're in South Florida, it's not too late. Throw your bok choy seeds out there. Within two months, you'll be eating this from your own garden. This is absolutely delicious. One thing I have to tell you, this soy sauce is a bit salty. The flavor is incredible. I probably should have measured my teaspoon. I think I did a little bit more than a teaspoon. But, oh my gosh, this flavor, I wish you guys could taste it, but you can. You can start growing your bok choy today. So until next time, let's plant, grow and eat together. And don't forget to hit like and subscribe and click the notifier bell that you can see the next video. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Backyard Farmer Pad on Instagram too. I have a whole lot more updates that I, I, and pictures that I post there. So till next time.